alive again tonight. Give him glory, give him praise for his awesome presence. Give him praise because of the great thing that will happen for each one tonight. Bless his name forever. Glorify him and bless his name forevermore. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. And Father, we look unto you tonight, for they looked unto you and they were not ashamed, but their faces were lighting up, lighting every destiny here tonight, change every countenance here tonight, illuminate everyone's career tonight, and let everyone return with the power of your light. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Please be seated. If you don't mind, you keep put those beautiful hands together for the King. The Lord of Lords is his name. The mighty God, the Holy One of Jacob. The I am that I am. The one that can do and undo. The one that is and was and ever shall be. If you know he's here tonight, put those hands together for him. Hallelujah. You are welcome to Zion tonight. And in this Zion, God is waiting for you already. And I know everything that heaven carries, it will be delivered to you on earth this, month, this night in the name of Jesus. I thank God for this privilege to bring this word to us. And I thank God for the privilege given by his servants and the graces upon this altar in that Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 7 he said ye are partakers of my grace Paul was speaking and I heard God's servant in the house said long time ago he said I don't want to be known as a strong man I want to be known as an ungraced man and I have seen the grace duplicate all that the testimony of this commission carries by that grace tonight, I see the blessing of God coming your way in the name of Jesus. Say with me, what practice guarantees profitable living? One more time, God's prat what practice guarantees profitable living? Every word practitioner is qualified for profit. The profiting of the world is for what practitioners? In Psalms chapter 1 and verse 1 to 3, it says, Blessed is that man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in verse 3, it says, This man that practices the word, that does the word, whatever he doeth shall prosper. He will be relevant in season and out of season. He said, his leaves shall not, shall not wither. If that person is a world practitioner and is receiving that grace tonight, let me hear your loud amen. Tonight, in our Wednesday series, we're looking at what is in the world. What is the what of the world? What is the what of God's word? What is the word of God's word? I believe quite a number of us waited upon the Lord this night. Waiting upon him is not a waste. For waiting upon him, I see your strength renewed. For waiting upon him, I see your weakness exchanged for his strength. I see every lack exchanged for his abundance. If that person is here, let me hear your amen. Look at that scripture in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse number 17. Hear what it says. Whatever your task is tonight, on this mountain, it shall be delivered with your desire in the name of Jesus. He said, when the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for tasks, I, the Lord, will hear them. And I, the God of Jacob, I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. Verse 18. He said, this is what I will do. And that's what God will do for someone here tonight. I will open the rivers in high places and fountain in the midst of the valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of water 
and the dry places spring of water. Someone is returning with testimony of a turnaround in the name of Jesus. What practice guarantees profitable living? What is in the world is our series on the Wednesday services. From the beginning, and the beginning of every beginning was the world. Everything we see, everything we admire, everything that is available is created by the world. That means there is nothing without the world. Everyone that has the world has everything because the world made all things and everything answers to the world. Every man that has the world is in charge of all things. All things answers to the man that has the world. The word of the Lord we bring about change of command for someone here tonight in the name of Jesus. What somebody is asking, what can the world do? The word of God is so powerful that it can do so many things. And among so many things, number one, the world sets free from captivity. Whatever the captivity may be, whatever the oppression may be, the world has the power to set the captives free. We all know the scripture in John chapter number John chapter number 8 and verse 32. You shall know the truth. The truth there is the world. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You shall know the truth, and the truth that you know shall set you free. So any kind of captivity, financial oppression, captivity in the mind, captivity in business, whatever the captivity is, the word of God can have the power to set free from all captivity. Behind every captivity is the occupation of darkness. And hear what the word of God says. In John chapter 1 and verse number 5, it says, And the light, the light of the world, the light shineth in darkness. Maybe your business has been stagnated. Maybe you have moved everywhere and you don't know where else to turn. He said, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness surrender, and the darkness comprehended not. By the word of the Lord tonight, every form of captivity, captivity you can't sleep well, captivity of strangers appearing to you, captivity of moving objects in your body, captivity of the trail of the devil over your life. I see it broken tonight in the name of Jesus. In Luke chapter number 6, from verse 17 to verse 19, the Bible says, And the multitude came from everywhere and gathered to hear him and to be healed, to be delivered if you like. And the Bible says, When Jesus spoke the word, they were delivered from every captivity. By the word coming your way tonight, every form of satanic oppression in your marital life, over your children, that issue that looks like you don't know what else to do. The word of God will bring about liberty in the name of Jesus. That's why in James chapter 1 and verse 25, it says, Whosoever looketh into the law of liberty, this book has your liberty. This book has your freedom. And by the release of the word from his word, his book tonight, I see your liberty delivered in the name of Jesus. The word carries the power for your liberty from every form of satanic oppression. What more is in the world? The word of God contains, it can, it can calm every storm of life. Every storm of life can, is, can be controlled, can, be, can surrender by the word. In Mark chapter 4 and verse 36 to 41. There was a great storm, and the master, the word himself, Jesus Christ, the word personified, was in the storm. He was in the boat. And while the storm, the wind was blisterous. The Bible says, and the word responded to the storm. And what was the response? He spoke the word to the storm. And the Bible says, from great 
violence of wind, there was a great calm. From great storm to great calm. Whatever the storm of life may be with you tonight, storm over your marriage, storm over your children, storm over the work of your hand, storm over your business, storm over your finances. I command great calm in the name of Jesus. Say with me, calmness everywhere. That means the world can put anything under control. It can control every challenge. Life is full of challenges. Battle of life, come on and out. Battle of life is without timetable. And but no matter the battle, if you are with the world, the world has the controlling power. And by the word tonight, that battle over your life, that storm and that mountain, call it that challenge, call it that joblessness, call it that barrenness, whatever the name may be, that storm is coming under the word control tonight in the name of Jesus. That's why Jesus said, no matter the mountain you are facing, if you shall say to this mountain, be moved. Every mountain is movable by the word. Every, every, every storm is comable by the word. I see the word of God answer to you tonight in the name of Jesus. What more can the word do? The word of God is your lifeguard. The word of God is your lifeguard. It guides you in your decisions. And life is full of decisions. They are, you are faced with decisions every day. You have to decide between the left and the right. But the word of God helps to direct you. It helps to tell you the right way to go in order to have the best of the profit. That's what the word does. In Psalms chapter 119 and verse 105, it said, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. The word of God shows you light in the midst of confusion. It shows you light in the midst of several options. That word is the manual for living. You want to make a decision for your marriage. You want to make a decision for a business. You want to make a decision for a friend to work with or a friend not to work with. The word of God is your guide. You want to make a decision concerning your ministry, concerning your career. The word of God is your guide. By the word, I see someone here guided tonight in the name of Jesus. May I say here tonight, lack of the word is very costly. Not having the word can cost you so many things. That's why we must go all out for the word. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 13, it says, a man that, has, that lacks the word, he says, he will be, that is void of understanding, will be beaten with many stripes. Lack of the word is what makes a believer a victim. Lack of the word is what makes a believer vulnerable before the storms of life. Lack of the word is what makes a believer defeated. In the words of our father, Bishop David Rico said, There is no mountain anywhere. Every man ignorance is his mountain. In Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13, he says, My people, God knows you are his people, but you need the word of God to prevail over the issues of life. He said, My people, are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. As you go for the world, as you go for the world, I see the blessings in the world. Answer to someone here in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to know the word of God does not jump on people. It doesn't jump on people. You walk your way to the world. In the scriptures, in Matthew chapter 13 and verse 44, he talked about the parable. Jesus talked about the parable of a person that found a great treasure. He said he sold everything he had to buy that treasure. You must give the world all the attention in order to get into the world. You must give it all the attention. You must open this Bible. You must read it. You must listen to tape. It's a conscious walk. It is a walk. It doesn't jump on people. This night, as you take responsibility in the world, I see the word of God open to you for your desire of profiting in the name of Jesus. What is in the world? 
Somebody's asking tonight, what is the word of the world? What is the word of the word of God? What is the word of God's word? What does he want? The word of God wants the whole world. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3, and we understand by faith that the word was framed by the word of God. The maker of everything that has been made is the word. The word of God is what made everything. The word of God is what everything answers to. What is the word of the world? And that's what we're looking at tonight briefly before we round up. What is the word of the world? The word of God, talking about the content of the world. The word of God has the power to reproduce. So me reproduce. So me reproduce. To reproduce means to be fruitful. To reproduce means to yield. To reproduce means to be productive. The word of God has the power to make empty things to become full fruitful things. To make empty things to become abundance. It has the power to reproduce. One day in that scripture in Genesis chapter 21 the Bible says and the, and the Lord visited Sarah. Who is Sarah? Sarah is an old mama. Who is Sarah? Sarah is a woman already that has crossed monopoles. Who is Sarah? Sarah is a man whose husband is already 100. He said, and the Lord visited Sarah. And the Lord did unto Sarah as what? As he has spoken by his word. And Sarah conceived and Sarah carried a child. So me reproduce. I can't hear you. Say reproduce. Whatever the word has produced can be reproduced. Whatever the word produced from the beginning. The word produced fruitfulness from barrenness. Produced the whole world we see from an empty world. Whatever the word produced before can be reproduced. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. Luke chapter 1 verse 38. We saw Mary. The angel spoke to Mary. He said, you are highly favored. And you will bring forth a child. And she said something. He said, let it reproduce, if you like. Let it be unto me according to your word. Against the law of biology. Against the physiological being of Mary. The word of God brought forth a savior from a virgin. Tonight, whatever is said to be closed, whatever is said to be not working, the word of God will reproduce in your business. Will reproduce in your career. We reproduce in the work of your hand. Shout a good amen. It has the power to reproduce. I had a testimony of our father, Bishop David Oripo. He said one day he was about to travel and a woman ran to him and she was crying. And she said, sir, I desire the fruit of the womb for about 18 years. I've been, I've been believing God for the fruit of the womb. And he opened the Bible to Deuteronomy chapter 7. And verse 14. And what does it say? It said, Thou shalt be blessed above all people. None shall be barren among you, nor among your cattle. And he asked her a question. He said, Do you believe? And she said, Yes. And that was it. That was the beginning of the miracle. Tonight, whatever has not been working before, we begin to work for you in the name of Jesus. Why will the word produce? It will produce because the word of God is incorruptible. The word of God is seed. The seed determines the future. The seed determines the fruit. If you have the seed, then you can secure the fruit. The word of God, every seed of the world carries the fruit inside. Every time you carry the seed and you sow the seed, you are set for reproduction. You are set for reproduction to yield and yield and yield again. The word of God is incorruptible seed. Luke chapter 8 verse 11. He said the word of God is seed. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 23, he said the word of God is incorruptible. Now hear me now. In case they told you you have cancer, in, to, in case they told you your womb has been taken, the word of God is incorruptible. What does it mean? The word of God, when it goes into any affairs, it does not change. 
it does not succumb to the affairs. Rather, it changes the circumstance. Is somebody here tonight? The word of God is about to touch that womb. The word of God is about to touch that business. Incorruptible. When the word of God enters a, an atmosphere of stagnation, it reproduces progress. When the word of God enters an atmosphere of death, it reproduces life. Receive the incorruptible word tonight in the name of Jesus. By the word of the Lord, everything that has, that has been stagnated, everything that has been dormant, everything that has refused to reproduce after its root, by the word, I see them reproduce in the name of Jesus. So what does it take? You need to locate the word. You need to locate the word. Jeremiah 15 and verse 16. You need to receive the word. Job chapter 22, verse 22. He said, receive, I pray thee, the Lord from his mouth. What does it take for the world to reproduce? You need to plant the word in your heart. Matthew chapter 13, and verse 23. You need to plant it in your heart. What does it take to reproduce? Number four, you need to speak the word. Proverbs chapter 13, and verse 2. You need to proclaim it if it has to produce. I see the word of God produce for you in the name of Jesus. As we round up tonight, what more does the word of God do? The word of God, what does it want? The word of God transform. Say with me, transform. I can't hear you. Say with me, transform. Say one more time, transform. To transform means to change level. From <laughs> begging to giving. To change level for being sick to becoming a healer of the sick. From changing level from failure to success. It has the transforming power. Isaiah chapter 9 and verse number 8. He says, He sent a word into one man called Jacob. And that word, that word, lightened. Another word means transformed into Israel, into an institution, into a nation, into authority. If somebody like that is here tonight, let me hear your amen. So it does not matter how deformed the case may look like. So deformed that you don't know where else to turn. So deformed that everybody is reading question mark on you. By the world, there's going to be a transformation for that person here shouting amen. It is a transforming power. And what is in the world that transforms? It is light. It is the light of the world that transform. What is light? Light is understanding. What is light? Light is going beyond reading to seeing. Every time you see what God says, not what you have been hearing. You have had prosperity. You have had healing. You have had longevity. You have had peace in your marriage. But when you see it, light has come. When you see it, light has come. And when you see the world, faith becomes automatic. When the light of the word comes, faith becomes automatic. When the light of the word comes, you have unusual speed. When you, the light of the word comes, your position changes. When the light of the word comes, your provisions are delivered. By the light of the world, I see someone changing level tonight in the name of Jesus. In Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1, Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is written is risen upon thee and verse 3 he said behold the Gentiles shall come to the horizon they shall come to your light when you carry light you command attraction everyone begin to marvel at you because you have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light by the light of the world I see you shining out there in your world in the name of Jesus as a student, I see you shining among your equals. As a business person, I see you shining among your equals. Permit me tonight, we have been called into light. But we dominate by generating more light. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, it says, You are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He has called you forth out of darkness into his marvelous light. But if you must manifest that light you go for the world 
the more of the world you receive, the more light you generate. The more light you generate, the more dominion you command. Light does not debate. Light rules. In that scripture, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 12, verse 16, Genesis chapter 1 verse 16, he said he made the, the bigger light to rule in the night, to rule by day, and the lesser light to rule by night. Light rules. So when you catch the light, you rule over poverty. You rule over stagnation. You rule over, over emptiness. You rule over barrenness. You rule over demonic forces. If I have a ruler of the world by the world, let me hear your amen tonight. I saw something in Esther. You see, when you carry light, everybody wants to be like you. People lose their identity to want to be like you. In Esther chapter number 8 and verse 16, the Bible says, And the Jews had light and gladness and joy and honor. See all that follows light. Gladness, you can't have light and be sad. You can't have light and not be joyful. You can't have light and not command honor. And see what next happened. The Bible says, And they commanded by their light, the next verse, verse 16, 17, it says, And everyone in the province wanted to be like the Jews. As you step out of this place by the light of the world, everyone we want to be like you. The glory of God that you carry will begin to speak in your life. So shall it be. Light rules. But how do I generate light? Light is generated, one, by praying. Psalms chapter number 119 verse 18. David was praying. He says, open my eyes that I may behold the wondrous things out of your law. So, you are listening to that tape. You get that book. You are listening to your Bible. Pray for light. Number two, you meditate to get light. You meditate. To meditate means to think. You have heard the word. You have read the word. Now, picture the word in your mind. When you meditate, pictures are formed. And you can't have the picture and not have a future. Pictures are formed. In that scripture, in First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15, it says, Meditate upon these things that your profiting may appear to all. By the word tonight, I see your profiting appearing to all in the name of Jesus. With due permission, I'd like to share this testimony. Our father, Bishop David Rico, was sharing a testimony of what happened sometime in the 80s with him and our father in the house. That a woman was dying. And they came to call them in the office. And they both went to the place. And when they got to the place, they saw the husband of the man opening the Bible and reading Psalm 23. And the wife was dying. But as soon as our fathers got into the house, he asked a question of light. When you are in light, you are in charge. When you are in light, you are in command. And he asked a question. He said, how old is she? And they said, 42. And he responded, she cannot die. Why? Because the number of your days you shall fulfill. Why? Because Psalms chapter 90, um, 91 verse 16, it says, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. And that same day, the woman cooked and traveled and left death aside. I see you going out as a savior to your world tonight. I see you going out with the power of light upon this commission in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, I receive your light. As I stay with your word, I receive your light in the name of Jesus. Light. The access of the world is only for the children of God. Only the children of God have access to the light. In Mark chapter 4 and verse 11. It's unto you is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. To order is parable. It is fantasy to others. You can't have access except you are a child of God. 
John chapter 1 and verse 12. Hear what it says. It says, as many as receive him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Even as many as believe, believe, believe on his holy name. Look at verse 13. It said, not born of the will of man, but born of the will of God. Not born of the flesh. You have been born once, but by the birth of Adam, every man fell. Until you are born again, you don't become a child of God. Until you are born again, you don't enjoy the power of light. And hear me, you need light to dominate. You need light not to suffer frustration. You need light in order not to be under oppression. Light, light is what commands your dominion on the earth. Tonight, I'd like to pray for that man. I'd like to pray for that woman. You are in this service tonight. You know you are not born again. You know you have been playing religion. You know you have been toying with unrighteousness and sin. But tonight, you want to say, yes, I'm set for the Savior. I'm set for light. I don't want to be a child of darkness. I want to be a child of light. That kind of person, rise your feet right now. That kind of person that wants to be a child of light. He says, he has delivered you from the power of darkness and translated you into the kingdom of his dear son. That person that wants to be a child of God, he wants to be a child of light, not a child of darkness. You want to experience what is in light. Now rise your feet. Wherever you are in this hall, wherever you are at the back, that man and that woman, rise your feet. Until you rise for him, you cannot shine. You want to shine, rise to your feet. You are tired. Is the church clapping? Somebody tonight is tired of that habit, is tired of that drug, is tired of that immorality, is tired of religion. He wants to experience light. Now walk your way right here to the front. Pick your bags and your Bible and walk your way right here to the front. Everyone that is making a decision for life, pick your bags and your Bible and begin to walk right here. Somebody is already coming. Don't be the last person. Don't be the last person. Run up here to the front. Tonight is your night. The light of God is here to rub on you. The light of God is here. From the back, that person, we are waiting for you. Rise your feet and take step fast. Moving here right to the front. Why they are clapping? You are here tonight. You are saying, well, I know myself. I know how to handle my issue. But listen to me. Until you present yourself to God, God does not present you to the world. Until you make yourself available, He does not have a say and do all that He needs to do in your life. Tonight, I'd like you to just surrender. Surrender that thought. Surrender that habit. Surrender that unrighteousness. Surrender that unrighteousness. Surrender that sin to Him. He's able to handle it. He's able to handle it. Surrender that character, ungodly character. Now surrender to him tonight. If you are coming in the back, I'm waiting for that man, waiting for that woman. Run up here right now. This is your night. Your night of liberty. Your light, night of change. Your night of light. Your night of dominion. If you are coming, church, clap for that man. Someone just stood up now. Someone just stood up now. Run up to Jesus tonight. He's the giver of life. He's the giver of light. Now everyone in front. If anyone is coming, we're waiting for you. Run up here right now. The Lord bless you. Now, everyone in front, raise up your right hand and say this prayer with me. If you are coming, do that very fast. Run up here. Now, say with me, Jesus, tonight I surrender my life to you. Save me. Deliver me from every sin and unrighteousness. Cleanse me even by your blood. Today, I am a child of God. Today, I call you the Lord of my life. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Now, I pray for you. Father, the grace that brought these ones tonight, let us say in grace, keep them. Every power and shackles of darkness be broken over this destiny. In Jesus' mighty name. And amen. God bless you.